Hey everybody, Tech Habit Asher here. I am back. Finally, I'm back. I am moved. I know it's been two months. Uh, life got hectic working full time and doing some side jobs. Uh, just kind of took up all my time. But I've got a few hours here uh, and in the morning and we're going to try to try to discuss uh, a couple things. Uh, first, a little pet project I've wanted to do, which is to save my iPod Classic. Um, the hard drive in it is failing. Uh, sometimes when you put audiobooks, which is pretty much what I use this for, is just audiobooks. When I put audiobooks on here, um, it will, uh, just parts of entire sections of books will just be garbled nonsense, and then once in a blue moon, I'll hear it clicking, and a clicking uh, noise from a hard drive is a sure sign that the hard drive is failing. So, uh, we're going to see if I can use a compact flash adapter to replace the hard drive that's in here, uh, restore it in iTunes, and uh, hopefully get it back up and running. Uh, the other thing that we're going to talk about is I promised y'all an AMD build. Um, I said I was going to hopefully maybe be able to do an FX series uh, build. Um, that didn't work out. However, because of Ryzen coming out, I am doing an AMD Ryzen build. And we'll talk about that a little bit after uh, we go and look at my iPod Classic build. So without further ado, let's take a look and see what happens. Okay, let's get to it. I've got a flathead screwdriver here. This is basically just going to be used as a uh, basically a spudger to help me pull open uh, the iPod Classic case if needed. This is my iSeesimo, which is uh, a metal spudger, which I much prefer over the plastic ones, considering the plastic ones break. I know folks are concerned with things like scratching up plastic on casing if they're taking a computer or a laptop apart, something to that effect. I'm less concerned with that. I guess maybe I'm more careful than others, but I don't generally scratch things up too much. So this is a cool little tool to have. And then just in case, once we get inside, we need these tiny little screws taken care of. I've got a very small Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, this says JMCRV 1.0 on it. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with my finger in the way. But there it is. So let's get started. Go ahead and put this on hold so you want the orange showing and then this is where it's a kind of an, an odd trick um, you got to get in here right along the edge of the 30 pin connector and you have to pull it out so that it actually goes all the way through like so and once you get it through then you can actually start to get in with another tool such as the flathead here this tiny flathead and kind of start to work your way around the edge of it and doing a bad job of getting it in the camera here I apologize but you want to get along the edges here and you're gonna see these plastic clips and it's gonna pop those so what you want to do you just want to pop those out ah. takes a little finesse huh so and this is hard to do with trying to make sure that we've got the camera in the right place. So I wonder if instead we should put the Phillips head in there. Actually, let's do this. So you can do this with the IC some We can get real close to the inside here and start to work our way around the edge like so. one plastic clip out of the way just kind of keep working the edges there so we got that side to pop open once we do that we're kind of starting to make some headroom on it so I'm sticking my fingernails here in the edge trying to pull it apart that is difficult to get leverage on while holding it in front of the camera I apologize so I just took the my pry tool again and just popped the corner so now you've got the whole side exposed, like so. And just going to be a couple more here. So we're going to stick it in right around the corner. Bam. So now, it just opens like a clamshell. So we can just gently remove that. And whoops. So <laughs> this one's a little bit older. So this is the actually the, uh, the lock for um, the ZIF cable here. And I think I just accidentally popped it out. Uh, so we will see if we can get that in. So always uh, be careful with this kind of thing um, because 
accidents can occur. So in theory, just flip up that little brown latch right there and very gently I take that back, you know. I think I'm gonna leave that in place. I'm gonna move this. There we go. So we're gonna flip this little black latch right here. This is the one that we want to flip. So we can then, I do believe, pop it out just like that. No effort at all. Well, that's kind of kind of scary. All right. So that is the old 1.8 millimeter hard drive that came in the old iPod Classics. Uh, this is a 30 gig model. It's got some heat shielding. No, this isn't really heat shielding. It's like insulation, I guess, but kind of acts like heat shielding to a degree. And that's the original Apple logo right there from the Toshiba Corporation, is who made these tiny hard drives back in the day. So now that we've got that done, we are going to take our converter here. This is for our compact flash card. We've got a 32 gig. 120 megabytes per second read, which I really doubt it's writing at 120 megabytes per second. All right, and this should be, in theory, a simple matter of just plugging this in. In theory, a simple matter. I'm blocking the camera entirely. Let's see if we can't get this in like so. Flip it down. Okay, well, that was graceless of me, but it works to a degree. <laughs> All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and let's take it off of hold. So we're back to silver here. And let's see if the iPod powers on. No, oh, well, that's right. All right, so I figured out. <laughs> so now I know where this goes. So there's this little cable right here. That is the power cable from the battery here. And it goes into this tiny, tiny, tiny little spot here in the corner. Those little gold connectors right there. Camera focus. So what needs to happen is this needs to go back in place. If I can get it back in place, that is where something like this, some tweezers come in handy. So I can flip this back out. Thank you. Try to Put this back in here. Awkward angle for me with this camera. Okay, I think it's lined up right, so just slide that back on, just like that. If it is new, I hope. I hope it goes that way. Flip this over and see if we can get this cable to connect. Takes some real finesse here, guys. Okay, so without closing this all the way back, let's see if I can get the power on. Oh, hey, look at that. Boom! Does power on. And it says. Connect to your computer. Use iTunes to restore. Awesome. It's exactly what we wanted to see. So, I'm going to uh, get that pretty again. So, with that being said, now we can just close this sucker back up. The little iPod Classic here. And, bam, we are still connect to your computer. All right, we are going to do a little 
movie magic here. Now here we are in iTunes and we are going to hook up the iPod to the computer. We're going to give it a second, let it recognize the iPod in just a second. Alright, so now it's telling us it's found an iPod in recovery mode. We're going to have to restore it in order to use it. A-OK. -okay. Let's click on restore iPod. Yep, we are wanting to restore this iPod back to factory. And away it goes. And this only takes, uh, well, it, it only takes a few seconds, really, because it's a compact flash drive, so it's super fast to format and reset the software that Apple had put on the device originally. And that's it. It's going to reboot now. And here we go. Yay, welcome to new iPod. Awesome. Continue. Stink with iTunes. Yep, let's get started. So here you can go. You can see that everything is recognized. And I'm going to rename this to my audio pod because it's my audiobook iPod. But as you can see, the serial number is recognized. We have the capacity listed. Go over here to the left. Sync audiobooks. Yep, absolutely. We can do that. All right, that's it. The iPod Classic is done. It is fixed. It is working. So there we are at the main screen of the iPod Classic. So I'll get that set up and start putting my audiobooks back on it. Happy about that. Now, what's probably half of you, I would assume, at least half of you, I would hope, <laughs> are here for is uh, my AMD build that I'm talking about doing. So I got this idea in my head that I was going to do an AMD Ryzen build. And I, I'm an old school AMD fan, um, but when Intel came out with the Core i series of CPUs, the hyper-threading on them just, AMD just couldn't compete. And as, as much as I wanted to stay on board the AMD bandwagon, I'm much more interested in performance myself. So I switched over to an Intel Core i7 3770K. It's what I've been using for the last five years. I uh, used a Gigabyte motherboard, Kingston RAM, Kingston solid state drives. I got a Toshiba solid state drive in there. So it's just kind of a, a, a system with a lot of different parts in it. Uh, and I've, of course, cycled graphics cards over the years through different manufacturers, XFX, uh, PNY. I had, a, I had an EVGA card for a very brief time. Um, so it's just gone through a lot of iterations. So I've decided that this time I'm going to do a full AMD ASUS build. And to prove that I'm not just saying that to you, I'm already on the way. So I went ahead and bought myself the, uh, the ASUS wireless card here. It's an 802 AC. 1100 card, um, I'm sorry, 802.11ac card. I'm going to learn to speak English one day, I promise. Uh, I've also bought AMD RAM, AMD solid state drive, and the AMD ASUS Prime B350 motherboard. So, I'm doing a full AMD branded, ASUS branded build everything that I can get in there except for the power supply, which is uh, an XFX power supply that I got a long time ago. It's, a, it's an 80 plus gold rated power supply, 750 watts. Compl totally, it's, it's totally fine. <laughs> Five years later, the thing is still kicking. I can still overclock my graphics card and my CPU with it. So we're going to hope that it's equally as good for this build here. Uh, I've already ordered the CPU. It is on the way. And I think that... Um, I think the last thing I want to do is probably order an ASUS graphics card. I've got an XFX RX480 in my build right now, so I'll probably go ahead and build it, get benchmarks for it, and then when Vega comes out here in a few months, I'm going to buy an ASUS Vega card and put that in here, and we're going to go from there. So thanks for watching, y'all. I hope to see you soon. I hope you're excited to see what's coming, and have a good day. Thanks again.